What we're now going to look at is the adjusted present value method of valuing investments. With the weighted average cost of capital, we assume that the capital structure is going to remain unchanged. And what that means is you're not going to take any extra debt or any extra equity. You're not going to change your overall balance of debt versus equity when you're taking out your new investment. However, in reality, it's very often that you will take out extra debt if you're going to invest in a new project. And what the adjusted present value is going to look at is the effect that this is going to have on the overall value of the firm by taking out debt to invest in a project that's hopefully going to bring you back a return. Now, adjusted present value is fundamentally based on the principles laid down by Medigliano and Miller that we saw earlier on in the course, and mainly the fact that if you take out debt, the value of the business is going to increase because of that tax shield. What we're going to assume, therefore, when looking at these questions is we're going to invest in a project that is going to generate back a return, whether it be a positive or negative net present value, some money will hopefully come back in from this investment, but we also need to think about, is it worthwhile taking on this project, given the fact that the shareholders are going to be better off by just simply taking out that debt? Some projects will generate a net present value when valued simply, but when you take into consideration that you'll be better off by having the debt for that project, the whole project on balance could actually be worthwhile. What we're going to do is look at how we approach an adjusted present value question. And this is one of the areas where students very often feel as if they don't really understand what they're doing. It can be broken down into three relatively straightforward steps. And keep in mind what we're trying to do here. We're not necessarily trying to get the right answer. What we're ultimately trying to do is pass the exam. Don't get me wrong, it always helps if you fully understand what it is that you're trying to do. But fundamentally, we just need to get 50%. And to get 50% on an APV question is relatively straightforward. As long as we understand the three steps and we apply our knowledge to those three steps and always get to the end. Now, the three basic steps... Step one, calculate the base case NPV. Step two, calculate the present value of the financing side effects. And step three, simply add together steps one and steps two. Even if you are really struggling on step one to work out this NPV, you're really struggling to work out step two, the present value of your financing side effects, make up a figure for step one, make up a figure for step two, and as long as you add them together on step three, you've shown a level of understanding of what you're trying to do and you will get some credit here. The moral of this is you must get to the end of this because step three is without a doubt the easiest of the three steps. What are these steps then? Well, calculate the base case NPV. We're going to work out a simple net present value calculation using a discount rate that reflects an all equity firm. We're going to assume that the company has no debt whatsoever, work out the cost of equity accordingly, which will therefore become the cost of capital because there is no debt, and we're going to work out the net present value based on that cost of equity. We're going to keep the exercise in a, middle, in a minute relatively simple, but it's quite possible that they could get you to work out that cost of equity by de-gearing the information that you've actually got, either using that risk-adjusted approach with weighted average cost of capital or the Midigliano and Miller formulas that we saw before. The example we'll see in a minute, just to keep it simple, will give us the cost of equity of an all-equity finance firm so we can understand the basic principles of adjusted present value. So fundamentally what's going to happen here, you're going to have a cost of capital which reflects you being an all-cost of equity, and once you've got that, it's just simply working out a net present value of the investment that you're actually looking at. Once this is done, we can then calculate the present value of the financing side effects. Now, the main part of this is going to be the tax saving on any debt interest. Now, we're not actually going to bring in the cost of the interest itself, because in effect, that's already incorporated into your net present value calculations. What we're going to do here instead is say, if we do take out debt, we generate interest payments that we'll have to pay, but we also get a tax saving, which can then be passed on to our shareholders to make them better off. 
there may also be issue costs associated with the debt. So excluding the interest, just simply by setting up this debt or issuing new debt, you might get hit with some sort of issue costs or transaction costs, and that is going to have to be incorporated in. What we're going to do with these is discount at the cost of debt. So we're going to work out the present value based on not the cost of equity that we've used for the base case MPV, but the cost of the debt itself. Once this is done, you are simply going to have a net present value from the investment itself, a present value of the financing side effects, and you're simply going to bring these together. So what we'll take is the present value of the project, add on the present value of the tax yield of the loan, and then bring in any present value of other side effects, and that will include working out the cost of the issuing of the debt. Keeping these three simple steps in mind, we're going to have a look at how it applies to a little example. EJ's PLC is an all-equity finance company which is considering a new venture which will require a capital investment of half a million dollars. This investment is expected to generate a post-tax annual saving of capital and is expected to generate $70,000 in perpetuity. ALZ PLC are planning to finance the project via an issue of irredeemable debentures at 8%. The debt will incur tax allowable issue cost of 2% of issue value. Corporation tax at the rate of 30% and corporate debt is assumed to be tax-free. The current cost of equity is 15%. Calculate the APV of the project. Okay. First of all, step one, base case NPV. For the purpose of this exercise, just to focus on the functionality of APV, the figures in this question have been kept quite simple. So what we have here is an initial investment of $500,000, a post-tax saving of $70,000 per annum in perpetuity, and we have a cost of equity of 15%. So in effect, what we're going to have is an investment of 500000 70000 coming back in every single year forever, and we have to discount all of this at 15%. So first of all, to discount those cash flows, we have $70,000 per annum, and to discount a perpetuity, you simply divide it by the discount rate. This is going to give us a present value of $466,667. We then take off our initial investment. Which is $100,000, which obviously doesn't need to be discounted because we assume that is in year naught at the start of the project. This would give us a base case NPV of negative $33,333. What this is fundamentally saying is if the company was all equity financed and we were using shareholders' money to invest in this project, and the shareholders require a 15% return, as it stands, this project would not be viable and therefore it would be rejected. However, when we look at step two, we can work out the present value of the financing side effects. First of all, we're going to take out debt of half a million dollars and we're going to be charged interest of 8%, but we're going to get a 30% tax saving on that interest. 
So first of all, the interest we pay is $500,000 loan interest of 8%, and we then need to multiply that by a tax rate of 30%. So if we work this out, you have $500,000 debt. 8% per annum means we're paying $40,000 per annum interest, but we're going to get a 30% tax saving, so we're going to get an annual tax saving of $12,000. We then need to discount this. Now we're going to assume that we're going to get this $12,000 saving every single year in perpetuity. We discount it at the cost of debt and therefore the present value of this is $12,000 per annum divided by the cost of debt of 8% which is dollars and $50,000. This means by taking out the debt, your shareholders are going to benefit from a smaller tax bill of $150,000 in total in present value terms. We then also need to consider the issue costs. Issue costs are 2% of issue value. So $500,000 loan Issue cost of 2%, but this is a tax allowable expense, and therefore we can take off that tax. So we have 500,000 multiplied by 2% minus 30%, and we have a $7,000 cost. We can then pull it all together. Step three, working out the APV, take your base case NPV, which was a negative $33,333, add on the present value of the tax saving, and then take off the issue costs. So, minus... 33,333 plus 150,000 minus 7,000 and you get 109,667 dollars. As this APV is positive, just like net present value, we would accept this project. What has fundamentally happened here, the project as it stands, based on the cost of equity, the return that the shareholders would normally require if the firm was all equity financed, would give you a negative net present value and therefore would normally be rejected. However, given that the shareholders want that return, but we're not going to use their money, in effect we're going to use debt instead, having that debt to finance this project will generate a tax shield and that tax shield is actually going to make these shareholders better off. So overall, by taking on this project with this debt, the entire package will increase shareholder wealth and therefore this should be accepted. However, adjusted present value isn't a perfect model to try to work out whether you should or shouldn't take on a particular project. It does have its weaknesses. Specifically, the process of de-gearing an equity beta of a levered company in the new industry to obtain a suitable asset beta for an all-equity firm relies upon the Medigliano, Medigliano and Miller arguments. When market imperfections such as bankruptcy costs are introduced, it is unlikely that Medigliano and Miller's proposition is going to be valid. In the example that we've just had, it was simply gave us the cost of equity because it was an all-equity finance company. If a company has debt, to try to strip out the cost of that debt and work out the cost of equity using Medigliano and Miller's arguments completely hinges on all the assumptions that were made by Medigliano and Miller. Any limitations of their propositions are also going to be limitations 
of APV, and if Modigliano and Miller's propositions don't hold true, then the calculations that we've just worked out for the adjusted present value are likely to be incorrect as well. Secondly, the discount rates used to evaluate the various side effects can be difficult to determine. Normally, the risk-free rate is used to evaluate the corporation tax savings on loan, interest and issue costs. This is valid if the firm is certain that it will be earning sufficient profits to take immediate advantage of the tax relief. If the firm were not certain that the situation is more risky and a higher discount rate should be used, the problem is how much higher We've assumed in this question that debt was risk-free, and if the debt is risk-free, we can use the risk-free rate. But if there is a chance that we will not be able to make those interest payments, that debt is no longer risk-free, and we therefore need to use a different discount rate to work this out. However, these are limitations that you will possibly need to discuss in the exam. These are not limitations that you will have to rectify your calculations for. Do the steps as we've just laid out. Step one, work out the base case MPV. Step two, work out the present value of your financing side effects. And step three, bring them all together. You can then go on to discuss the potential limitations of this after you've actually done your calculations.